This is London. Napoleon said that Britain was a nation of shopkeepers, and right or wrong, London is a market. And tonight there's the cups, a lip-shaped cup. When you drink your tea, your lip fix the cup. Your nose doesn't go in it. It's burnished gold, burnished handle, hand-painted, and every piece guaranteed. The half of that, you can do as you like with those. You can throw those at the old man, and they'll bounce back to the dresser. London is a market, and here in Trafalgar Square, London is selling history. But London can sell you peaceful surprises. London can sell you a country ride on horseback, inches away from its bustle. London can sell you a sense of idyllic remoteness right at the heart of things. And in fact, slap on one of those bus routes that take you back to the towers and spires and the sounds you recognize. Londoners see their city with workaday eyes and seldom realize that their own hometown is a mecca for tourists who are drawn here from all corners of the world. That's why even St. Paul's Cathedral spruces itself up. Oranges and lemons say the bells of St. London's not just a market today, it's a supermarket. And even its most venerable buildings with a wash and brush up are acquiring something of a snazzy new look to keep up with all the new commodities on show. But the storeholders in this open air bazaar have never lost sight of the fact that their main selling line will always be tradition. As you see it's in the Lord Mayor's show. Let the world kid itself that London is fast asleep and living way back in history, London will keep trundling along. And her latest and newest idea in restaurants will wear a turn-of-the-century veneer without giving two hoots. Here in Bishopsgate, they've gathered together the whole history of early motoring. And not sold it, but given it away as the decor, with a menu combining modern dishes with old-world nostalgia. This is London, the London that the tourists quickly find. But even as you sit here, you sense that there's another London outside. And the tourists keep pouring in to the old place that we in Britain take so much for granted, to the old marketplace that we find hard to think of as a tourist center. Because when Londoners turn themselves into tourists, they aren't landing, they're taking off. You don't realize that right round the calendar, tourists raise London's population by a million. Every day, the crowds come to see the horse guards, and the show is colorful and free. The surprising thing is how few Londoners themselves ever see it. Just ask your friends what time it takes place, and most of them simply won't know. This is the glittering giveaway sort of ceremony that you won't find in any other market. Though horses have their established place, all sorts of horses. Old Father Thames could give you a good bit of sales talk. The river's been the scene of a stunt or two, but what's this they're pulling now? Oh yes, we sell all sorts of stunts in this marketplace, and a water motorbike we take in our stride. But it can't be the River Thames that attracts tourists by the tens of thousands. It can't be views of such things as the Houses of Parliament. What else can they find in this marketplace? Sensation? But of course, London's got sensation to sell as well as everything else. 
You won't find them missing a single trick, your press photographers. What have they cooked up here? This is Britt Eklund's birthday cake, so we're back from the thought of sensations to stunts and stars. For Peter Sellers must break into the scene any minute. And here he comes with her birthday present. But in London, if you're lucky, you can see stars like Frank Ifield in public. We're in Fleet Street, where you meet the top journalists and their raw material. This writer is jazz man journalist Pat Doncaster. Famous crime men gather here in the pub that has the whole history of the printing trade on show. You stand your beer on upside down printing blocks if you're a sports editor like George Casey here. And for his convenience, the geography has put the printer's way round. London pubs, if you pick them right, tell you the whole of London's social history. Here Gilbert and Sullivan come alive. The theme you can read in a whole string of hostelries is London. The London of fact and the London of fiction. As in the Sherlock Holmes, here's a pub that's the museum of a famous detective who never was. of the Baskervilles, fiction, and the gay dog of real life. Is it perhaps for this sort of thing that tourists come to London? Because they can strike up a conversation with a stranger over an inquiry about Conan Doyle's speckled band. There's a pub in Covent Garden where you can certainly get the best of two worlds, the Barrow Boys of the Garden and the baritones of the Opera House. There's no doubt here where culture and commerce meet on human terms that tourists come just because it is the most colourful market in the world, where they wrap the goods up in memories. Just a moment, sir. I don't want your five pounds. I won't sell one. I'll pack them in a bag. I can get hold of that set. I could smash them to a thousand pieces. And I'd realize more money for the broken pieces upon the scale. The first hand gets it. The complete set. I'll smash them and realize more. The fun customer, the lot. Four pounds. Gentlemen, there one. Gentlemen, there one. Ladies.